When I came here, I just saw Turkey as a bridge. This is Ali. He's a queer refugee who escaped from Iran. He made his way here to Turkey, where he was eventually promised a new life in America. The U.S. Ha has traditionally taken people who were among the most vulnerable. They told us you should be in America between two months, between two weeks and two months later. But that's not what happened. Because there was another story unfolding thousands of miles away that would leave Ali stranded with nowhere to go. And then Trump came and in, suddenly introduced a travel ban and it was like, what's happening? Now that people are staying here for years and years, it's putting people under a lot of pressure. The situation for LGBTs in Turkey got worse. There were, you know, several refugees that they were killed. In those times, it was started. Oh my God, what should I do? It's like a prison for me. It's like a prison big as the city. I've come to Turkey at a time of uncertainty for queer refugees that are living here. I'm on my way to a city named Denizli to meet Ali, a 31-year-old queer refugee from Iran who never thought that he'd be stuck here for years. Hi, nice to see you. Hi, nice to see you. Welcome to Turkey. <laughs> Most of the morning that I woke up is the same. When I woke up, I checked my phone that I, did I receive any new emails or there is any new message on my profile for my process. And I, if I didn't receive, I said, okay. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that, I start my day. Every day is repeating, repeating, repeating. It's like a deja vu. This is confusing. You can't plan for yourself. It's like a box, a box made of the iron. You are inside and you can't do anything. It's like a jail, exactly like a jail. way that I choose or not, how can I survive myself, how can I earn money? All of this question is asking me when every morning that I woke up to end of the night. So being a refugee in Turkey, you're not provided housing, you're not provided food or a stipend for food, you're not allowed to work, and you're not allowed to leave this city. So how are you supposed to survive? <laughs> this is a big question in my mind. Ali's an artist, and he's able to make some money by selling his work online. Sometimes that I can't earn money enough for my months. At the end of the month, I saw my packet, oh, there is not enough money. And I called to my mom, and she helped me. But other queer refugees aren't as lucky and don't have a family to fall back on. Uh, when I, in my childhood, every time I remember that I said my mom, mom, I'm bored, <laughs> and my mom, gives me a piece of the paper and the pencil. Yeah, you can paint it. Every time she told me, you are an artist, you can be a good artist. The only thing that I love is art. I really wanted to work in as a queer art. I wanted to create some photography about the LGBT people as 
it was too hard, it's too risky. That's because these photos could cost him his life. Ali always knew it was risky living as a queer person in Iran. But then he started to receive anonymous threats online because of his artwork. I decided to left Iran. Since the 1979 Islamic Revolution, being gay in Iran is a crime. And the punishment for that crime is the death penalty. Um, the danger that people, the LGBT people are facing today is exactly the same as the danger that they faced 40 years ago when the Islamic Republic of Iran came into power. And there is a common belief that homosexuals should be killed. That's Arshan Parsi. He's a gay man who escaped from Iran nearly 15 years ago. He now runs a nonprofit that helps queer refugees like Ali, who are waiting in Turkey. It's hard to know just how many queer people have been executed in Iran since 1979, but some estimates put that number between 4,000 and 6,000 people. And we know it's still happening. In September 2014, Ali packed his bags, boarded a flight, and escaped to Turkey, one of the largest destinations for Iranian refugees. For Iranians, traveling to Turkey is much easier than other countries. They don't need visa, they just have a passport, and that's why Turkey became a hub for a lot of Iranian refugees. Queer Iranian refugees used to wait in Turkey for up to two years before being resettled in places like the United States or Canada. But not anymore. When you, when you all came to Turkey, did you imagine that you would be here this long? No. I didn't think about it. I really... I, Martin says, I, I thought I was going to be here for six months, <laughs> and now it's five years. That's our team, Farman and Mona. They're just a few of Ali's friends who've been waiting here just like him. Generally, the only option you have here as a refugee or an asylum seeker is wait. Like, you, there is nothing that you can do to change anything or to uh, fasten. Is it that? Like, everything in my mind is now Turkish. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, you don't have any choice. Over two years had passed as Ali went through the intense vetting process required to be resettled in America. He traveled to Istanbul for a U.S. cultural orientation. They say in that moment, you will be in America between two weeks or two months later. I came home, yes, I should pack my bag. But on January 27, 2017, everything changed. In his first week in office, U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive order implementing a travel ban, which targeted a series of Muslim-majority countries, including Iran. It also halted all refugee admissions to the U.S. I told to myself, where should I go? Which country is open? <laughs> they call the doors to me. It was like a nightmare. But it's still like a nightmare for me. But it wasn't just the ban. Since then, President Trump has also slashed the number of refugees that the U.S. admits every year to historic lows, putting some of the world's most vulnerable refugees at risk of further danger. And that policy is why Ali remains in Turkey just waiting for his ticket to America. There are 26 million refugees on Earth. Some of them are okay in the places to which they fled. It's not a good existence, but they're safe for the moment. But there are a, a piece of that population where they're still endangered. That's Ann Richard. She was the leading Obama administration official responsible for the U.S.'s refugee resettlement program between 2012 and 2017. These are families that have been um, split apart. Maybe members are missing. They may be ethnic or religious minorities. And also LGBTQ refugees may have fled somewhere and their old culture was a threat to them. But the place to which they fled, they're still threatened because of who they are. Turkey hosts nearly 4 million refugees, far more than any other country in the world. But life isn't always easy once they get there, especially if they're queer. The Turkish policy was to spread refugees out throughout the country. 
This was a dilemma then. You had refugees being sent away from larger communities that they could have been part of, of their same ethnicity, same national origin, out to the countryside and feeling very isolated and not getting much in terms of services. There is a big shock for every refugee who go to Turkey that I had another expectation, but this is in the reality and it's totally different. Most of them, they're not prepared. And queer refugees like Ali are left waiting in a place where they still face violence and discrimination. We are refugee here, we are queer here, and we are Iranian here. And there's three things disaccepted. But I cannot even travel out of this conservative city which doesn't have a bar to go to. Like, it has, but it doesn't. If we go, we, we have the chance to get beaten. Uh, there was this trans person uh, who was beaten like really bad in a club. They had to leave the city because of the, what happened. And there were like uh, videos. They take off the skirt. Of her. Yeah. And she was half naked on the ground outside of the bar and video was everywhere. So she, she should leave the She city. had to leave, yeah. It's happening every day. About two months ago, my hair was so long, and I cut all of that. Every time that I went to go out, most of the people look at me like this. Oh, what is the appearance? When I came to Turkey, I was 26. Now I'm 31. All of these five years was full of the stressful depression. The only things that I can trick myself and busy myself is survive myself is art, doing some, create something to doesn't let my roots dry. I didn't look at here as a home because you choose somewhere as a home, you're comfortable in there. You're stuck here. This is not home. It was the country of the success. It was the country of the freedom. It was country of the love. And now it is clear. There's nothing. What's next for you? I don't know.